Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Prestige Imports. You're speaking to Javier. How can I direct your call? Uh-huh. Uh, excuse me, sir. I've got to go. This week on Inside the Lab, we're covering an iconic piece of history that changed the automotive world as we know it. Considered by many to be the original hypercar, this vehicle had monumental performance that embarrassed supercars of its day, and its numbers were seared into enthusiast minds worldwide. This car shattered top speed records and became an automotive titan that other manufacturers spent well over a decade attempting to overtake. It's our honor to bring you inside the lab and show you the one and only Bugatti Veyron. Before we talk about this car specifically, Let's pay some homage to the man responsible for creating the company in the first place. Founded by Ettore Bugatti in 1909, the company was known for its stunning design and for winning a multitude of races. Ettore and his son Jean built the company with great success, but after the death of Jean in 1939 and the death of Ettore in 1947, the company struggled to survive. The brand was revitalized in 1987 by Romano Artoli as Bugatti Automobili SPA and they released the forgotten supercar, the EB110. However, due to unfortunate circumstances, the company slowed to a halt in 1995. The brand was then acquired by Volkswagen in 1998 and became Bugatti Automobiles SAS, where the development of the Veyron then began. The Veyron was named after famous Bugatti racing driver, Pierre Veyron who won the 1930 Geneva Grand Prix in the Type 37S and the 1939 24 Hour of Le Mans in the legendary Type 57S. Even though it's such a widely known vehicle with plenty of publicity over the years, the Veyron is still a rare vehicle with production limited to 450 units worldwide. That includes all of the special editions such as the 16.4 Vilda Este, the 16.4 Blue Centenaire, the 16.4 Sang Noir, the 16.4 Pure Sang, the Veyron Grand Sport, the removable Targa, which also had the Loire Blanc edition, the Sang Blue edition, and the FBG Par Hermes edition. There was also the Veyron Super Sport, the Veyron Grand Sport Vitesse, the last of which contains even more special editions, such as the Jean-Pierre Wilmer edition, the John Bugatti Legends edition, the Mayo Constantini edition, the Rembrandt Bugatti edition, the Black Bess edition, the Ettore Bugatti edition, and finally, the Bernier Venere edition. The Veyron was originally supposed to launch in 2003. However, it didn't debut at Geneva until 2005, and understandably so. With a direct order from Ferdinand Piche, the automotive legend and the grandson of Ferdinand Porsche, the Bugatti Veyron had to achieve a top speed of 253 miles an hour. In the early 2000s, that top speed would have made the Bugatti Veyron the fastest production car in the world, even though the previous record holder, the McLaren F1, had reached a top speed of only 243 miles an hour. 390, 391, 391. Most people believe that the goal was 400 kilometers per hour, but that only translates to 248.55 miles an hour which is about five miles short of Peach's goal. So why 253? The answer is because of a Group C race car named the Welter Racing Peugeot P88, which Peach also helped create. In 1988 at the Circuit de la Sarthe, that car was able to reach a top speed of 407 kilometers per hour, which translates roughly to 252 miles an hour. Thus, the team at Bugatti had their work cut out for them. To make an everyday road car reach this ambitious goal, Bugatti had to travel into uncharted territory and needed to design a car with the most advanced aerodynamics and create the most outrageous power unit to hit that 253 mile an hour goal. And that's exactly what they did. Beneath that beauty, you've got engineering perfection. It is the soul and the heart of the car. The creation of the famed Veyron engine deserves its own segment. The Veyron was originally supposed to have a W18 with a five-speed manual gearbox, but that engine supposedly couldn't make more than 555 horsepower. 
Engineers at Bugatti went back to the drawing board and combined two VR8 engines to create the famed W16. Quick snippet. VR engines are a type of engine where the cylinders are slightly offset to each other, as opposed to a straight line of cylinders like a V engine. Thus, you only have one cylinder head instead of two, saving precious space in the engine bay. The two VR8 engines were also accompanied by four turbochargers, and thus the 16.4 moniker was born. The turbochargers are MP70s supplied by MPE and create maximum boost at 18.1 PSI. Together, this engine weighs in at an astonishing 1,080 pounds and produces an earthquake-inducing 1,001 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 922 pounds-feet of torque at 2,200 RPM to 5,500 RPM. Red line is at 6,600 RPM. Fun fact, the 16.4 engine wasn't the first 16-cylinder engine that Bugatti created. In 1915, Ettore Bugatti created the U16 engine by mounting two straight eight cylinder blocks together for planes during World War I. That colossal engine helps the Veyron achieve zero to 62 miles an hour in 2.5 seconds, zero to 124 in 7.3 seconds, zero to 186 in 16.7 seconds, and of course, a top speed of 253 miles an hour. An engine capable of consuming over 10,000 dry gallons of air in under a minute needs a fuel system that can keep up. Thus, Bugatti created their own adaptive boost pressure fuel system and a custom motorsport-based Teflon-coated 26.4 gallon fuel tank. The system itself can handle 1.4 Gs of lateral acceleration, and when at full throttle at 253 miles an hour, the fuel tank can be drained in under 12 minutes. Power is sent through a seven-speed, wet, multi-plate, double-clutch gearbox built by Ricardo to specifically handle the monstrous torque. One clutch handles all odd gears, and the other handles all even gears and reverse. Together, they're able to let off shifts in under 150 milliseconds. Another fun fact, Bugatti was the first automotive manufacturer to use a seven-speed, dual-clutch transmission in a production vehicle. From there, power is sent through a Haldex permanent all-wheel drive system, where a 265 front section and massive 365 rear section tires claw at the ground below them. These tires are specially designed Michelin PAX run flat tires that are engineered to hit the top speed of 253 miles an hour and are actually glued to the rims themselves. Even the tire pressure sensors had to be specially developed as they can experience centrifugal forces as high as 286 pounds at over 240 miles an hour. Fun fact coming at you again. According to Bugatti, at 400 kilometers an hour, there's no power steering assistance in the steering, presumably to put all the engine's might towards thrusting you to 253 miles an hour. Of course, to aid those tires in holding the mighty 1,001 horsepower to the tarmac, Bugatti fitted a double wishbone hydraulic suspension that not only allows for the car to handle beautifully, but also allows for instantaneous ride height adjustments between the normal road mode, handling mode, and the top speed mode. The last of which requires a special key to be inserted on the side of the driver's seat. To slow yourself from the 253 mile an hour top speed, Bugatti sourced calipers from AP Racing and pads from Paget. The front axle accommodates massive, eight piston calipers with 400 millimeter carbon ceramic rotors, and the rear houses six piston calipers with 380 millimeter rotors. Just below the horseshoe shaped grille, there's a carbon fiber channel that directs air to cool the brakes as the discs can reach temps up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit during hard braking. Bugatti also included an integrated air brake system with the rear spoiler that can go from an angle of 15 degrees to all the way up to 55 degrees in just 0.4 seconds. Not only does that air brake create up to 0.6 G on its own, the air brake also functions to transition weight bias to the rear under hard braking to keep the car flat and stable. The entire system together can generate more than two Gs in deceleration. The 16.4 engine is actually so massive and powerful, it produces over 2,000 horsepower of additional heat during combustion. To make the Veyron a truly usable everyday road car, Bugatti made cooling an absolute priority. There are a total of 10 radiators and five separate cooling circuits throughout the entire car. Three of them are oil-based and two of them are water-based. The larger high-temperature water circuit contains 10 and a half gallons of coolant and three radiators located in the front section of the vehicle to keep the engine at operating temperature. The second water circuit is a smaller, low-temperature system 
with its own separate water pump and contains five gallons of coolant to cool the charged air and prevent overheating and slow traffic conditions. The side openings are specifically for the three oil cooling circuits. There are two on the right side for the dry sump gearbox oil cooler and the rear differential cooler, while the one on the left is purely for the engine oil cooler. The two aluminum air scoops located near the roof of the Veyron feed air directly to the engine via intake filters which then pass on to four turbochargers that compress air through the intercoolers and onto the manifolds. The combusted gas then leaves through an 18 gallon titanium exhaust system via four tailpipes, two visible to the eye and two hidden as they work in conjunction with the carbon fiber rear diffuser. In fact, the entire body is composed of carbon fiber, except for the doors, which are made from aluminum. The Veyron's chassis is a carbon fiber monocoque with an aluminum honeycomb encasing each side. The front space frame is made from aluminum and the rear space frame is composed from aviation grade stainless steel. Altogether, the Veyron weighs in at 4,162 pounds. Fun fact, because of the rear carbon fiber structure's rigidity and strength, there's no need for a transversal bracing over the engine, which allows for full exposure and even better cooling. While still possessing the aerodynamic capacity to cool the 16.4 engine and confidently reach 253 miles an hour, the design language of the Veyron is still undoubtedly Bugatti. The classic two-tone paint scheme highlights a Tori's signature center line, and the front bumper still includes a horseshoe-shaped grille. Moving inside, you'll find an Alcantara headliner and supple leather tailored throughout the cabin. The steering wheel is rather minimalistic in design and has a three-spoke aluminum layout that's reminiscent of an airplane propeller. The center console is constructed from a special aluminum alloy that matches the horseshoe grille we discussed earlier. The engine turned finish gives the interior a distinct look that feels almost timeless. Looking to the instrument cluster, you'll find a speedometer that reads up to 280 miles an hour and one of the coolest instrument gauges of all time. An analog dial that shows you in real time how much horsepower the 16.4 is creating. Bugatti claims that barely any parts, components, or systems could be taken from existing car concepts and used in the Veyron. The key word here used is barely, as the Veyron shares the same key fob with a 2005 Volkswagen Jetta, admittedly with a fancy leather wrapping and an engine turn finish to match the interior. Aside from the Volkswagen key, the Bugatti Veyron is a truly unique engineering marvel. It's a vehicle that can humiliate supercars, withstand multiple applications of full throttle abuse, and hit a top speed of 253 miles an hour, all while pampering its driver with a Burmeister Hi-Fi stereo and a beautifully air-conditioned tailored cabin. Its drivability is an admirable feat, but that level of luxury performance doesn't come cheaply. The base MSRP of a Veyron was about $1.75 million without options. And that's just the start. Maintaining this hypercar can make corporations cry. A regular oil change costs $21,000. Replacing a set of those specially designed Michelin PAX tires costs at least $30,000. All four tires must be replaced at the same time, and they have to be flown out to France for them to be properly mounted on the wheels. If you're one to use your Veyron frequently, and you're coming on your third set of tires, you must replace all four rims as well. If that Teflon-coated, motorsports-inspired fuel tank needs to be replaced, it'll cost $20,000. Tack on another $22,000 for the Bugatti certified labor to install it. Those MPE turbochargers will set you back $6,000 each. And the labor to install a pair of them costs a cool $21,000. This level of performance doesn't come cheap. But in all fairness, the Veyron can be seen as a bargain as VW claims it cost over $6 million to produce each car. I remember as a kid when the Veyron debuted. The hype was real, and no matter who you were, you knew the stats. Not only did every automotive journalist do a lengthy story on the car, but even other markets joined in on the Veyron hype. But admittedly, there was a time where I was almost tired of hearing about the Veyron. It seemed like a talking point to one-up any supercar, and I was exhausted of listening to non-car lovers bring it up because of the exclusivity and the price tag. However, it's a beautiful thing to come full circle and realize that the world is lucky this car even exists. The intense effort and determination it took to overcome such boundaries is inspiring. Other manufacturers would have simply crumbled at the thought of building a car like the Veyron in the early 2000s. Can you imagine how many times these engineers got thrown back at the drawing board 
and still had the perseverance and passion to overcome these hurdles and deliver one of the greatest automotive products of all time. Being on the cutting edge of innovation is a phrase thrown around by plenty of marketing departments within the auto industry. But for the Veyron, it couldn't be more true. In light of Ferdinand Peach's passing, it's amazing to comprehend the sheer dedication and vision it took to create the Veyron. Peach could have retired peacefully and just watched new Porsches and Lamborghinis roll down the production line. But that wouldn't have aligned with his character. He was a man that accomplished his goals by all means necessary. And with the Veyron as one of his masterpieces, his legacy will be remembered forever. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Inside the Lab. Don't forget to smash that like button hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss our next video. Let's have a chat in the comments. Do you think the Bugatti Veyron was the first hypercar created? Who is Bugatti's biggest rival? What car do you want us to feature next? Check out our inventory at PrestigeImports.com and follow us on Instagram to see more content.